Hi, my name is Erin Stiles, and I'm a program director and an assistant professor in the Temberty Faculty of Medicine at the University of Toronto. Today, I'm going to tell you about one of my all-time favorite practical teaching tools. It's called the Last Class Workshop, and it was first described by Elizabeth Blesher in Honors in Practice in 2011. The workshop was created to address a couple of issues that I think are pretty universally agreed upon, which is that online course evaluations aren't always a very informative way to get useful feedback, and that the last class of the semester is usually not all that materially productive. It is not for the faint of heart, but this workshop is a highly effective, really fun, and dynamic way to garner really valuable student feedback for both evaluating your course as it is now and coming up with great suggestions to drive evolution of the course in future cycles. So, I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes convincing you that this workshop is a really great way to use that last session of contact time with your students, during which you are perhaps not accomplishing a ton anyway, and showing you one great way that this type of session can be pivoted into the online environment. So before I launch into describing the workshop to you, I just want to frame it a little bit. The session that I'm going to describe to you can be implemented at pretty much any level and in most types of courses. So in its original form, it was oriented towards first year undergraduate students in the social sciences. And the workshop, as I'll be describing it today, has been targeted to graduate students in advanced genetics classes. I'm going to be focusing on an iteration of this workshop that will work best with a relatively small group of students, somewhere between 10 and 50 people who are learning in a synchronous virtual learning environment. But I'll also offer a few suggestions for adapting this session for larger groups and for groups that are completely asynchronous. The entire premise of this workshop, irrespective of the group that you're working with, is that your students, having just completed your course, are really the experts as far as what worked and what didn't work in the context of the student experience. So it's also contingent on this central idea that I think we can all agree on, which is that as instructors, we are always trying to be better teachers and to make our courses better. And we never want to stop stretching and improving. And so if that's true, then the best, most helpful thing that we can do for ourselves as instructors is take advantage of this expert knowledge. Our students, at the end of each iteration of a course, are going to be an excellent source of constructive feedback, innovative adaptations, and updates. And this workshop offers one really easy, effective way of tapping into that. If you decide to try the last class workshop in your course, the most important element in my perspective is framing it correctly for the students. So a week before the last class, I send these detailed instructions out to my students. It lets them know what to do to get ready for the workshop. I want them to review the syllabus and the course as a whole from pretty much all angles. And they need to know in advance that all of this review and prep work is going to be a bit of work. Also, and really just as importantly, this sets the tone. So getting the students amped up and invested in the objectives of the workshop is a really important part of why the session works so well. And so how you sell this to your class really matters. So here's what I tell them. Dear students, there will be no lecture during our last class. Rather, I ask that in preparation for this session, you reread the course syllabus and review the content of the class as a whole. I'll be asking for your feedback, both positive and negative, regarding every item in all of the following categories. Lecture content, assigned reading material, guest lecturers, and assignments. As you can see, this will require significant reviewing, and preparing for the last class will be time consuming. I expect you to come to class ready to tear apart and rebuild this course. I appreciate the work that will go into reviewing all of these items, even very briefly. Your thoughtful, specific feedback and active critique will provide much needed direction when it comes to honing and revising this class for future cohorts. So the goal for the session is to solicit their honest feedback, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I ask them to come to the session ready to tear the class apart and rebuild it. This prep message lets the class know that I have high expectations for them in terms of what they are gonna bring into this last session. This is a pretty big ask, but over the years, my classes have really jumped on this as an opportunity for student activism in the classroom. They've taken this challenge seriously, and on average, about 95% of the class anonymously reports that they did at least some of this intensive preparative work. So this graph on the screen right now represents the responses of the most recent group of students, but it's very reflective of the previous groups. Luckily, Preparation for the instructor here is deliberately fast and easy, which is nice because not only are things that are going to be good for you often neither fast nor easy, but as instructors and teachers, we usually have a lot of things to spend our time on at the end of the term that are not planning out elaborate workshops. So normally, all that's required for this session is a pile of markers for the class, 
tape and great big pieces of paper with feedback prompts at the top that you can spread out around your classroom. And so other than bringing those items and thinking for a few minutes about what kinds of prompts you'd like feedback on during the workshop, this is really all you have to do to prepare and the legwork is really for your students. But wait a second. A lot of us are still living at work right now. I mean, working from home. And this does have a few perks. But how can you run a really hands-on tactile workshop like this when you're working all online with your students? There are probably lots of ways that you can do this, but the best one that I've found so far is using Miro's free education plan, which any of us working at an educational institute qualifies for. And I do this to create virtual poster boards so that I can run this workshop exactly as I would in my physical classroom in my virtual one. When you create a new project board, you can customize what it looks like completely, and they have plenty of prefab templates, but I've set it up to look just like a white poster with a writing prompt at the top. If we zoom out a little bit here, you can see that I've created nine posters in my virtual poster room, and each of these contains a feedback writing prompt that's specific to a particular element in my course. We'll get a closer look at one of these in a moment. But in general, I ask for feedback on my class activities, class favorites, readings, and class prep work, all the major assignments, suggestions for me that might not fit on one of the other boards, course content and organization in general, the guest lectures we invite in, and advice for next year's students. When you're ready to invite your class into the space, click on Share, and then select this option, Anyone with Link Can Edit. You can set a password on this too if you want to. And this Share option means that your students don't need to have their own Miro accounts to join in the session and add their notes to your virtual posters. And that when they enter the Miro poster room, they're gonna be joining it anonymously. That's important. So if I zoom back to my first poster, which is where we started, you can see that it's really just a practice run. So the class can test drive leaving feedback in this space. And while they're working on this, I use the opportunity to let everyone know what we're about to do. They have 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the length of the class session to leave completely anonymous feedback on all nine of the boards. And I also encourage them to play off each other's comments, to respond to each other, and to revisit boards that they've already commented on to see if anyone has responded to them. So the only rule here is keep it honest, keep it respectful, and keep it all on this virtual poster. So there's no discussing out loud at this stage. And the reasoning behind that is that I wanna make sure that all of the students get all of their comments down in writing, since there's gonna be plenty of time for discussion later. Importantly, before I let them loose in the virtual poster room, I remind my students about the major underlying rationale for what we're about to do and what I expect of them. This is your opportunity for student activism in this classroom. I want your help to tear this course to the ground and rebuild it better than before. Be civil, be respectful, but above all, be honest. You won't be hurting my feelings. I've published papers in peer reviewed journals before. If reviewer three didn't break me, neither will you. The last class workshop really hangs on your students trusting you enough to be almost brutally honest with you. And this is why I introduce it by saying it's not for the faint of heart. So now we start the clock and wait for that feedback to start rolling in. Here it comes. After everyone's had a chance to leave their written feedback, we work through all the posters out loud as a group. And so right now we're doing that mostly on Zoom. And rather than me collecting all the comments and reading through them out loud, I ask small groups of students to take ownership over individual posters and lead the discussion of the comments on their poster. So the students are gonna be driving the conversation and as we go over each poster, we wanna know whether or not the class generally agrees with each comment and why or why not. We wanna discuss whether or not there are elements of certain comments that need to be elaborated on. And we wanna open up the floor to the class to see if the group has any additional comments or feedback that have come up as a result of our discussion so far. And there are a couple of reasons to have students present the posters in small groups rather than reading their own comments on each poster or having the instructor read all the comments. So the first of these is that it really keeps the onus on the students rather than on the instructor to keep the conversation moving forward. And it also keeps them talking. That writing phase was silent for a reason because we didn't want to miss anything getting written on the posters, but now we really want that noise and discussion and debate. And then finally, it gives every comment a bit of airtime without individual students feeling like they have to fess up to having written it. And that anonymity is especially helpful with critical feedback. So instructors, at this stage, you're asking questions, confirming ideas, summarizing, taking notes, and making sure the conversation remains polite. But make sure that you're not driving the discussion or defending aspects of your class or getting cranky. 
This process of co-design only works if your students trust you not to penalize or criticize them for voicing an opinion. And the goal here is an almost radical collegiality. As instructors, we're really forking over the power and the microphone and the center stage to our students and letting go of that notion that we're in charge of the direction of the discussion or that we're the experts. In this particular discussion, the students are the leaders and they're the experts. And now everyone has this chance to elaborate on any comments that they want to. And we also have the opportunity to not only go through the feedback, but also to bounce ideas off each other and generate some really fantastic new ideas ones that I've been known to airlift directly into future iterations of my classes. All right, so far I've been discussing how I've pivoted a synchronous in-person session to a synchronous online session and working with a relatively small group of students, ideally less than 50. If that doesn't align with your class and you'd like to try this workshop, here are a couple of options. The goal with any pivot is gonna to be to maintain the two central elements of the workshop, the independent feedback first, followed by the take up and group discussion. First, there are some pretty easy adaptations for a very large synchronous class. If you have tutorial groups, you can take advantage of the small groups that your students are already used to working in and ask your teaching assistant to host these sessions. Since the session essentially requires no prep work, if you can secure an extra hour of TA time, this is the easiest option for running the last class workshop with a really big class. Then all you have to do as an instructor is collect all that feedback and notes from the TAs afterwards and then consolidate them. If you don't have tutorial groups or having your TAs host a final session like this isn't an option for whatever reason, and you really wanna fit this into your last contact session in a large group, you can simply split your students up into groups of no more than 50 and send each group to their own Miro poster room. You can decide if you want all the student groups to respond to all the same prompts, or if you want different groups to tackle different aspects of the course. Then you can facilitate the discussion using a combination of verbal and text comments. And the major challenge here will be making sure that you give each group or poster a little bit of airtime in the discussion. If your entire class is occurring asynchronously, you can still run a version of the last class workshop. The first part of the workshop will be very similar to what you would do in a large synchronous course. Split the class up into groups and send each group to their own Miro poster room to provide feedback. Since the feedback is going to be coming in asynchronously, you can ask students to revisit that room at least once after they've provided their initial comments to respond to their peers. The take up of the posters can also all happen asynchronously using the online course discussion board, which unlike the posters will not be anonymous. To get the most out of that, it should be moderated just like you'd moderate a synchronous discussion. Ask clarifying questions and prompt for responses when needed. So what might you uncover if you run this workshop with your class? Probably a few things that you don't expect. Without fail, every year, in addition to confirming a few things that I already suspected about the class, I usually find that my students hated something that I loved. For example, at the end of one of my courses, a lecture that I was really excited for got bashed to smithereens by the class. And you know what? They were right. That lecture has been retired now. I also always find that my class loved something that I thought they would hate. A short series of lectures that I thought were almost blindingly complicated and filled with algebra were such a crowd favorite that my students have actually asked that it be expanded into entire unit. That hasn't been practical due to timing constraints, but there have been a number of ways to incorporate more of that math into the course. The class always asks for something difficult. After a series of very heated debates spanning three last class workshops in the same course, the students have indicated that to best assess their foundational knowledge retention, that course should have a final cumulative exam rather than a final take home assignment. And finally, they even wanted more of something they thought they didn't like while the class was in progress. Despite complaining bitterly all semester about the amount of writing that was required for one of my courses, in the workshop they asked for more writing assignments. Hindsight is really 2020, I guess. So there you have it. There are a few options for ways you can tune and modify the last class workshop depending on the type of course and the group of students that you're working with. But is it worth it? From my perspective, yes. I always get excellent feedback that helps me improve my courses, but you shouldn't take my word for it. My students through the years have resoundingly not only enjoyed this workshop, but have also noted that they've never done anything like this anywhere else that it was a safe way to voice constructive criticisms of the course, and that it even helped them make connections to the course in different ways. And we can slap some numbers on this. In the last course I taught, which was a 20 person master's level graduate class, I had 19 of my 20 students agree to participate in a small study that asked a few questions about their experiences with the virtual adaptation of the last class workshop. A whopping 95% of the class said that they had never done anything even remotely similar to this in a formal classroom setting before. 
When polled in an anonymous survey, the majority of the students went on to note that the last class workshop was an overall positive experience for them, that it was a comfortable and judgment-free way to provide feedback, that it was a good way to provide detailed, specific evaluations, critique, and commentary on the current form of the course, and further, that it was an empowering way for the students to impact the future trajectory of the course. They also felt that this was a good way to collectively generate meaningful new ideas. And they noted that they liked both the first anonymous portion of the workshop, as well as the second group discussion based portion. I teach graduate students, so I care about how they relate to this model of curricular co-design in particular. And this group of students agreed that this is useful at the graduate level. A selection of the students even noted that this workshop helped them to make connections between concepts covered in the course that they may not have otherwise made or been able to recall. And finally, they agreed that this should be a permanent fixture in the course, which is a request that I'm very happy to oblige. Obviously, I understand the limitations of the study that I've used as an example here, given the small class size and the small participant numbers. But what I hope that you can take away from this example and this talk in general is that the last class workshop is a really fun and engaging way to solicit meaningful course feedback and curricular insights that really center the student voice. It can be widely applied across disciplines, class types, and levels of study. And if you have questions about how to fit this into your course, I encourage you to reach out to me. And finally, while I had developed this online adaptation for pandemic pedagogy to suit an emergency transition to online learning during the pandemic, I really believe that elements of this Miro-based workshop are going to have staying power after the pandemic is over, which will be a model to test in the future when we can return completely to in-person teaching. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you very much for listening to my adaptations for the last class workshop. Again, if you'd like to hear more about anything I mentioned here regarding using the Miro platform, the workshop structure for any type of course, or the types of prompts that I've used in my workshops, please feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to chat.